I couldn't leave well enough alone, and I just love stepper motors way too much to give up on this one. So, here's what I did. I went out and bought this uh, stepper motor controller for like 15 bucks on Amazon.com. How is this one different? So the chipset on this one's newer and it does uh, better micro-stepping. The board that I made only did half micro-stepping and this does up to 16 micro-steps. Uh, what does that mean? Well, it's very complicated. I'm not going to do a video on stepper motors right now, but it just means it runs the motor a lot smoother with less oscillations, more torque, and it's just all around a better driver. I also updated my code that's running on the Arduino and um, now I'm able to step at a much higher rate, so I'm able to use this micro-stepping and uh, long story short, I'm using the tone library to send the clock signal out to the controller. And finally, I've uh, significantly improved my system here. So let me show you what I did. If you remember this bucket from last time, this is uh, my main honey collection bucket and it's got the, uh, the spout on the bottom. I cut a hole in a lid for it, and I've got this bucket that sits on top, and I've drilled some holes in the bottom of it. And then I'm using this mesh bag that I got at one of the beekeeping supply stores online, and this is going to hold all my cappings and comb and kind of just strain out the, the honey. I love these mesh bags because when I'm done uncapping and I've got all the beeswax and comb and everything in here, uh, if you let it sit overnight, it'll drain out nicely and most of the honey will go right through this. And then you're left, you can just pull the whole sack out and you have a whole sack of, uh, of beeswax. And then you can either rinse it right in this thing or dump it out into uh, something else to rinse it in or dump it into a crock pot and just heat it up and, and render it that way. But anyway, it's a lot more, it's a lot easier to deal with the, uh, with the wax when it's already in a bag. So let's check out how this guy runs now. I don't know if you remember last time, but even with nothing in there, it had some difficulty coming up to speed. Now it's nice and smooth. The other nice thing about this controller is it uses switches to set the current. So I'm actually running this at a pretty low current. I think this can handle probably a couple amps, but I'm only running it at like one amp. Um, part of the reason I love the stepper motor is because it kind of like acts as its own clutch. If this thing gets hung up, it'll just start skipping. And if this was like a gear motor or something, it would just keep going. It, you wouldn't be able to stop it that easily. Of course, all that means nothing if this doesn't work, so let's try it out. Now, I only have these two frames that, um, there are only two capped frames that were ready in uh, my hive, so that's all I got to try this out with, but, um, so let's hope we don't blow them out, huh? so good. Okay, so this is like about 50 RPM. It's actually a lot slower than I thought it would be. Yeah, 
Okay, so we're at about 115 RPM, and um, I'm seeing some honey on the sides of the, of the barrel now. So something's flinging out. So it looks like we're having some oscillation, but actually, that initially was the belt skipping. Alright, so something happened here, and it got a lot harder to turn. Alright, so I wiped the tiniest bit of canola oil on the shaft here. Um, honey's not a very good lubricant. Um, so let's see if that makes a difference. That's 120 RPM. Oh yeah, much smoother, yeah. Oh, I think I got a winner here. This is working really well. So, uh, the nice thing is, so I can let it run at this speed and just listen and or walk away and do some other stuff. You know what, while this is going, I can be uncapping the next frames. And um, when I don't hear any more honey hitting the side of the barrel, I know I gotta turn the speed up. And uh, what's happening is all the honey at the edges, because they're going faster, that'll fling out first. And then the honey from the bottom of the frame slowly kind of starts pulling along the frame till it gets to the edge and then it's flinged off. And um, you got to keep going faster to get the, the honey that's towards the bottom of the frame, which is towards the center of this extractor, to fling out. But I like uh, this 140 RPM right now is, is, is doing really well. And I don't think it's putting hardly any strain on this comb. I just turned it up to 150 and Oh yeah, it's just it's just smacking the sides like you can just hear the droplets just flinging off. That's so cool. And here's what 200 RPM looks like. This has been going for quite a while now, so um, I think most of the honey's probably out of these frames. So let's uh, let's take a peek. And take a look at that. So it's interesting, if you notice, this barrel's kind of got a well around the outside. That bottom bearing surface, there's not even any honey in it. Take a look at that. That is some empty honeycomb. I'd say that's pretty good. And of course, take a look at that honey. Ah, oh. Hmm. So one thing you can do is just take a gloved hand and you can crush up all these cappings and bits of comb in here and that'll let the honey kind of flow out a little bit easier. But um, other than that, it's uh, gravity will do the work and uh, you'll be surprised how dry and clean all this wax is if you let it sit overnight. The honey will just drain right out of it.
So that's it for this time. I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, we'll see you next time. Mmm.